Now, let me say this. I was praying this afternoon. One of the things that the enemy will try to do is exactly what Haman did. He'll try to cut off not just your prosperity, but your posterity. He tries to cut off generations. And you know, normally when we say generations, we think of, we think of the next generation. How many know that there's been an, uh, I mean, there's such a crazy onslaught of generation, against generations today. I was just in one state where the attorney general of that state has said that she is committed to see a drag queen in every elementary school in their state. They've lost their minds. Disney has lost its mind. Have you seen this new cartoon about Satan's child or some crazy thing that Disney's cranking out now? And all the, I guess Peppa Pig has now has a lesbian couple. My grandchildren watch Peppa Pig. Then now they don't watch Peppa Pig, okay? So, but I mean, it's just crazy what's going on. So we always think about the next generation. Here's what the Lord said to me today. New York and New Jersey took more than your fair share of the enemy taking out your older generation during COVID. I think you guys lost more um, elderly people in nursing homes. Anybody here lose your parent or your grandparent in COVID? Just a couple of you. Here's what I heard the Lord say. The Lord said that he is going to pour out his spirit on the generations of those that lost parents and grandparents in COVID in this region, and he's going to make the devil pay. He's going to cause an outpouring to come to cause a continuity of generations. How many have an expectation of what God wants to do? The enemy wants to cut off our kids. I was just sharing that we've had to war for the life of our kids, not just when my son was little. I mean, just this last year, one of my children almost died, one of my adult children. I'm going to wrap up this teaching, but, and then we're going to make decrees against these Haman sons. These are robbers. These are conspirators and robbers. They want to rob the destiny of the church. They want to rob the destiny of the nation. They want to rob the destiny of our generations. I'm going to tell you a story about one of my, one of my kids. We have three kids. And we have a daughter that lives in New York. And this, ha- this actually happened a few years ago. She, um, she had migraines a lot. And so um, she had a friend come over when she had a migraine. The friend took a look at her and saw how bad she was, sent her to the hospital in an ambulance, and um, they did a, a scan on her, on her brain, and after three different very invasive kind of tests and scans of her brain, doctor concluded definitively that she had two aneurysms on her brain in inoperable places in her brain. And one of the aneurysms looks like, looked like it was getting ready to rupture. Now, like I said, it's really easy to get up here and preach a nice, inspiring message. Giving this, guys. We're fighting for our kids. We're fighting for our grandkids. We're fighting for the next generation. We're fighting for them to be what God's called them to be. And if your kid's out there in the world and, and left their faith behind, I'm telling you, it is time for divine reversals. Amen? We have a covenant with our God, and he wants to keep covenant with us. This Haman spirit wants to take our kids out, wants to wipe out a generation. So um, I flew up to be with my daughter because the doctor said, listen, I need to go in and find out if there's any pathway forward that I can get in there to intervene in this situation with these aneurysms because one of the aneurysms looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to rupture, and if it ruptures, it's going to kill her. It's at a part of her brain that she will not survive. So at that point... Our 34-year-old daughter flew home, sat down with us, and had the conversation about a living will, that she didn't want to be left on life support, that she didn't want, and this is not, this is not a fun conversation to have. When the doctor's telling her that death is imminent, and she's living with a death decree, hear me, over her life, it gets real. I was preaching Esther chapter 9 when this happened. And I said, oh, no, devil. Mm -mm. you're not having my daughter. So the doctor was going to go in with a camera and look to see if he could intervene. So I flew up, went with her to um, one of the major hospitals in New York. The doctor came in, a good Jewish man, sat down with us and showed us the 
x-rays of my daughter's brain showed us where the aneurysms were. And he said, Mom, I promise I'll do my best. He said, but I have to tell you that uh, in full disclosure that even this procedure could kill her. And I said, Doctor, that's not going to happen. I have a covenant with my God. And I'd like to pray for you as you go in to do this procedure. And so I prayed for him. I prayed for her. And then I went out into the waiting room and I continued to pray. Two hours passed and the doctor came out. And he said, Mom, come, come back here. And I followed him back into the procedure room, and I walked into that procedure room. I saw that my daughter was alive and well over on the table being tended to. And the doctor said, come over here. And he brought me to a wall that had about 20 pictures of the inside of my daughter's brain, more information than I needed to know, okay? <laughs> and he pointed to these pictures, and he stood there in front of the pictures with his hand on his hip, and then he went, Mom, I can't find any aneurysms on her brain. We serve a faithful God, I'm telling you. We serve a God that brings divine reversals, I'm telling you. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. If he did it for my child, he'll do it for your child. So we had to wait about eight hours before I took her home. And I just want just to show you the goodness of God. We took her home. I tucked her into bed in her little bitty, tiny, extremely expensive, hurts my head apartment in Brooklyn. <sighs> Jesus, help us, okay? It was about 10 o'clock at night, and I, I tucked her in, and I walked down to the corner store to pick up a few groceries, and while I'm standing in line waiting my turn, I'm standing behind a very tall Jewish man who's all decked out in his ceremonial clothing. He's an Orthodox Jewish man with the hat and the little curls on each side of his head. I know y'all know who I'm talking about. And he's standing in line with a single item in his hand, a study of the book of Esther. <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up, okay? <laughs> and I said to him, because this was the day that my daughter's death decree was overturned for life. And I said to this man, I said, you know, I'm a Christian, and I love the book of Esther. And he turns and he looks at me, and he says, well, if you loved Esther then you would know what today is. And I did not. <laughs> he said, today we celebrate Purim, the holiday of reversals. <laughs> that was seven years ago, and I preached the fire out of it seven years ago. The Lord told me we're coming in to a massive season where the decrees of death and destruction are being overturned, not just over our generation, not just over our finances, but over the, over the church and over this nation. Amen? Long-standing decrees that it seems like there's no way it could ever be overturned. I'm telling you, we saw it with Roe v. Wade. We're going to see one thing after another, after another, after another. I want you to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet with me.